Today we're going to look at importing text from a Word document into Adobe InDesign. If you look here, we've got a basic Word document open. It's got the basic sort of formatting that you usually find in most files that you get. We've got some headings, we've got some italic text, might be some bold in there somewhere, yep. Um, the truth is that Word does have full style sheet support. So, I mean, you can go into here, you can have a look at your styles panel. This is, you know, a heading. And you can see, even though this has had the title style applied to it in the program, there's still changes that have been made. The text's been made larger, a bold has unnecessarily been applied to it, things like this. Now, what happens is, Word has a set of styles. If you just apply your title style, without any changes, you'll be fine. It'll just bring in that piece of text with that title style applied to it. The problem is that nobody does this. You end up with changes like, oh, I want that heading to be heavier, so I'll just make it bold. And as you can see over here, straight away we have title plus bold. This is actually now a new style. So if I was to import this document, I wouldn't get a title style with bold applied to it. I'd get a style called title plus bold. You know, I could look at this and go, this paragraph is formatted normal. This is normal plus italic. That's what it brings in. This is you know, normal plus bold, and so on. You can start to see what the problem is. Normal plus bold, and then a completely different text one style. So how do you get around this? Unfortunately, what a lot of people do is they think that you can't fix it. And so they either try to import all the styles and then sort out the mess that you get, or they try to copy paste everything manually and reinsert all the styling manually, which is a recipe for disaster because you always want to minimize the chance of human error when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. So if we move over to InDesign, we'll just have a look at the way to place text. So go in File, Place, or Control or Command D, depending on what you're on. And this will bring up a standard file dialog box. Now, the first place that InDesign tries to trip you up is right here. Go down to here, show import options. For reasons beyond any sane person's understanding, this is always unchecked by default. It is essential when importing text to use the import options. So, um, you grab your Word document, you open up your file and you're presented with the import options dialog box. Generally speaking, it'll look something like this. When you open it up, it offers to preserve all the styles and formatting from your text and your tables, which obviously that's what you'd want to keep. <laughs> Except it really isn't. Because as I've previously stated, unless the Word document is perfectly formed, you're going to run into problems using this method. So typically, InDesign will try to import the styles from the Word document and create new styles in your document. Or if you're organized, you can actually have pre-made styles in your InDesign document already, and you can then map across the styles from your Word document over to the styles that are in your InDesign document. This is all complicated, and I'm not going to cover it today because it takes a bit of work, and it's not really what I want to focus on. I want to focus on the simple method that I'd use 80% of the time, which is up here. Remove styles and formatting from text and tables. Now that sounds incredibly counterintuitive, because you're trying to preserve all of the styles and the formatting. But it's really just semantics. InDesign considers styles and formatting to be the style sheets that Word embeds in the file. It considers the bolds and the italics and you know, the superscripts and all of that internal text formatting that you need to keep. InDesign considers those to be local overrides. You need to be sure when you're using this option here to remove styles and formatting from text and tables, you need to be absolutely certain that you always check this box. If you don't preserve your local overrides, what you will get will be plain text. And everything else is kind of, it's more on a per document basis. It's whatever works for you. Okay. And if we just quickly switch back over to Word, we can see that it looks pretty familiar but all of these styles are gone. So this document has come in clean. But if we look at the text, we can see that all of the formatting has been retained. So what do we do now? 
Well, I mean, if we we're very foolish, we could go in here and start making changes from up here, but honestly, you never want to do that. In InDesign, it is very important that you use styles. So your paragraph styles and your character styles. There's a whole other series just looking at these, so I'm not going to get into that right now. But suffice it to say, don't format your text using the standard character controls here. Okay, if you're formatting your text, you want to make sure you have styles defined for both paragraph and character, and you only work through those. So, we have our text in here now. What do we do? We've got all of the formatting in place, but we have no styles applied to anything. First thing you want to do, you want to create some blank character styles, because what you're trying to do is actually preserve any formatting that you need to retain. Any formatting within this paragraph that needs to be kept, I need a character style for it. So I need one for an italic, I need bold, and this is a pretty simple document, so that's actually all I need. So without having anything selected, we just go and create our blank character styles. So we need one for italic. You just go into your standard character formats, just go into your style section and pick your italic. You don't need to change it anything else this is all you want to see hit okay you've got an italic okay move on do the same for a bold and in this document i think that's actually all we need generally speaking you're going to want to have styles for a few standard things that you're looking for so italics bolds so now what you could do is you could go through here and manually start applying these but it defeats the purpose of bringing the text in with the formatting so how do we do it? Well, InDesign has a very powerful find and replace function. So we just go in here, hit Command or Control F. Find change comes up. Now, we're looking for a particular format. So we come down here. We are looking for basic character formats. We're looking for our italics. So hit OK. And we can also do replace. So we want to change any inline formatting that is italic we want to change it so that it has this character style applied to it. That's all we've done. We don't need to include anything up here. Set the scope to the story. It's usually safer than trying to do a document level scope. And we're looking for any text that's formatted as italic, and we're changing that format to simply have a character style applied to it. And then just find next. It'll jump through. It'll show you. Here's this piece of text. It's italic. Do you want me to apply a character style to it? Yes, you can. Hit change. Find next. Here's this piece of text with this formatting. And so on. You could go through the entire document manually if you really want to, but realistically, change all is fine. And it will report back to you telling you how many instances of it were replaced. That'll do it for you. And then we can do the same for our other formats. In this case, the document only has italic and bold in it, so it's quick enough to just do it this way. And again, five replacements. Now we're done. And when we go back over to our document, our heading doesn't really need to be bold, but it is. That's fine. Our internal text, our inline formatting, is no longer inline formatting. It's now got all of the styles applied to it that we needed. You can't actually get rid of this, but you can override it. So if I was to select this sentence, for example, Go up to here and change it to a different font. Now, InDesign has enough intelligence to understand that you're trying to keep that. But if you were to come in here and, you know, try and change the entire thing to italic, <laughs> this was a bad choice of font because there isn't an italic, but our bold has disappeared, as you can see. But the thing is, it's still there. It has an override applied, but it still exists. Once you've applied the character style, until you actually remove that character style, that piece of formatting is retained in the document. We apply our basic paragraph style here. Now, you can see overrides. Anytime you get a little plus sign, overrides have been applied to your text. Now, when we brought the text in, overrides were good. We wanted to keep the overrides. But now we've locked in the formatting that we need. We want to get rid of them. Now, this could be almost anything seems to think it's this word has an override on it. 
Ah, there we go. This is a good example, actually. Word brings in colors as well. So even though it looks black on screen, for some reason, Word has formatted this word using a different color. So how do we get rid of this? How do we fix our overrides? It's pretty simple, really. Clear them. Because the thing is, the formatting that we have is locked in. If you look here, it will fix the problem with the color. So you can fix problems with your text that you can't even see. Just make sure you bring your text in with all of the inline formatting in place, and then find and replace any instance of inline formatting that needs to be retained with the appropriate character style. And as long as you work through these two panels, you can't lose that formatting. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful. See you next time.